In a previous video about overlays, I showed you how to take an image that looks like this and invert it in a photo editing software to look like this. So that way you can take advantage of that background, that extra area to actually write and annotate. But what if you had an image that looked like this, something in full color that you wanted to, you know, get rid of all this white background? Well, we can't simply invert it the same way, and I'll show you why in a minute. But let's say that we wanted to get a final product that looked like this. How do we go about doing that? Well, today I'm going to be talking about masking in Photoshop. That way we can get rid of that background and hold on to the part of the image that we want. So you do need Photoshop for this, or you could also use Photopea, that's a free online editor. And there's other editing programs, of course, that can do masking, but today I'm going to focus on Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Photoshop. And I do have an image of this wonderful brownie here. I'll make it a little smaller so it's a little bit more manageable for me. But what if we did the same process that we did before on black and white images by going to image and mode or adjustments excuse me and invert what would happen well we end up with a moldy solar looking brownie <laughs> and that, that's nothing that we want for our final project so I'm gonna undo that what we're gonna be doing is masking essentially we're going to be cutting out this image so that way all we have is the brownie to do that with the layer selected, the brownie layer selected, we're going to go and click on this icon here in the bottom right corner. It's add a mask. So we're going to go ahead and add a mask. And you'll see that there's been a white box that is right next to our layer right here. If we then, right, or if we then go up here to the properties panel that opens and go to select and mask, a new window is going to open up that allows us to start doing that cutting. Um, here in the top left corner, we have a number of different brushes that we can use. The easiest one right off the bat is going to be to use this auto select brush, the quick select tool. When you bring the brush over your image, you'll see a plus symbol in the middle of this circle brush. If you hold alt, that turns into a minus. The minus will take away, the plus will keep an add. So if I hold alt for the minus icon to show up and start dragging on the white of the image, you'll see that it starts to auto-select and get rid of that part of the image. It's really that easy. Now, if you're dealing with something more complicated, you'll have to go back and forth between clicking to add and alt-clicking to subtract. But for most cases, especially if you have largely a single color background, it does an excellent job by itself. Now, we're seeing it on black here, but if you don't see this image, if you see something slightly different, go to your view mode if you click on that, you can view it as an onion skin, basically a semi-transparent version of it. You can see it on a uh, overlay of a specific color, if you want to see on red or green or blue or whatever. But on black is going to make the most sense for us because we want it to float in midair, and you can actually see it live as it's happening. If you want to do some fine adjusting to it, you can also go to the Smooth, Feather, and Contrast tools, as well as the Shift Edge tool. What do each of these do? Smooth, if, and I'll zoom in a little bit on edge so you can get a better idea of what's happening here. If I hit smooth, it tries to smooth out any jaggedness of the image that I may have caused when masking it out. But that can also kind of make it a fuzzy looking image, so I'm actually going to keep it at zero for now. Feather will start to slowly dissolve it into the rest of the image, but again, it's going to make it look like it has a weird halo effect for our purposes, so I'm not going to deal with that. Contrast is going to do the opposite of smooth. It's going to find anywhere that there's a jagged edge and make it more and more jagged. And again, I there's times where this is helpful, of course, in correlation with all the other tools, but not right now. Shift Edge is going to be your best friend. I'm going to take it back just a little bit to peel off some of that white fringing that you see here, and then add maybe a little bit of smoothing, just a little bit. Maybe take some of that edge off a little bit more. And if we zoom all the way out here by, I'm doing this with control and minus on the keyboard, you can see that looks pretty darn good. So I'm gonna click okay. And here, once I have it here, you see this checkered background that's saying that this is a transparent part of the image. We're gonna go to file and go to export, and we're going to export this as a PNG. Now, if I click on this, navigate to wherever you are saving this for yourself. I'm just saving it in a folder on the desktop for now for this tutorial. And I'll go ahead and get rid of that. Now, inside of your slideshow presentation, for example, I'll show you how I have this set up. So I'm going to go back to my slides. Actually, I'm in my slides right now. But I'm going to show you in Google Slides what this looks like in the workspace. So I'll kind of hunker down, hunker down here. Okay. 
what I've done is I have gone to uh, the folder on my system where I had this saved, and I have dragged that brownie right onto my workspace. If I let go, I can reposition it, do whatever I want. And because we have a transparent background from Photoshop, it's going to be transparent on our black background that we have for Google Slides. So now if I go to present again, it looks like I've got a floating brownie. And of course, as always, I can go ahead and annotate it for the amount of, say, fudge that's in it, or you know, point out that there are no sprinkles on this brownie or whatever sort of annotating that you would normally do. Now, I doubt that you're going to be doing a lot of brownie videos, but if you are, hey, this is a good start. <laughs> anyway, if you have any questions on how to do this, if you get caught up with it, uh, there's plenty of resources. I would suggest looking on YouTube or even Adobe's site. We'll walk you through exactly how to do this process. Or reach out to us at info at revolutionlightboards.com. Of course, we would love to help you in any way that we can. Until then, happy masking.